What's up, Bobber Nation? It's Jim Bobbington. We are going to head over to my friend John's house, and we're going to do a DIY on Tank D-Badge and installing some Art Abyss artwork onto the tank afterwards. So I will see you as soon as we get over there. All right, what's up everybody? We are here in the nice garage down the street at my friend John's and uh, here is his bike. We will be removing the tank badges, showing you guys best way to go about that and uh, installing the Artibus War Chief. What's it called? I think it's just uh, War Chief headdress. I'm not sure. But uh, these are made by Artibus Designs. She can, you can get them in any color option that you want. She'll paint them for you. But John, these were originally completely black, looked like an onyx. And uh, John painted these himself. Did a really good job matching it to this bike. And we will be going over the process today. It's a bit of a cold day. It's getting warm nicely, but the garage is a little cool. So we're using a heat gun to get it all warmed up the adhesive behind these letters is very thick and rubbery um, these letters are actually hollow on the back kind of concave so they're a bit fragile they're like stamped aluminum like an aluminum can yeah he started on the other side <coughs> earlier and you can see Using the fishing line floss method cuts kind of through it and it leaves a lot of residue on the tank Which will be fun to uh, blister your thumb rubbing up on And so what I'm doing here is I just have a plastic pry tool you can use a credit card You can put tape down if you're worried about your tank So it doesn't scratch obviously, you know different ones matte ones gloss This is the gloss one because um, I have the deep water blue metallic and it has the black on the side of the tank but by using a pry tool that's plastic, it's less scratching. And if I do get scratches, I have a buffer so I can buff it out um, before we uh, adhere the headdress. So I'm just kind of working under it slowly. And it's hard. I don't know if you can hear it. It's pulling the... Yeah, I can hear it. It's kind of separating the foam. I think, yeah, I think the prying method is best to so get as much of that residue off. You can see the... Yeah, and it's, it's pretty thick. Because these are the hollow. It's just like a stamped piece of tin, and it's really malleable. So you can just you can bend them and wrench them and, and do whatever. Um, I saved them because I'm going to maybe put the word Dynan on my Toyota. So you can just continue to scrape it. You can see how thick that is. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. But warming it up helped a little bit. Just softens it up. Yeah, your typical car emblems aren't hollow on the back, so the adhesive is a lot thinner. And it's like a different kind of adhesive, a different kind of foam. This is like really, really thick, dense foam that doesn't want to come up. So it takes a little bit longer. It's kind of, I was kind of disappointed once I started the other side because I'm so used to pulling off emblems and debadging cars, and this didn't work the way I wanted it to. Plastic helps. It doesn't scratch. And then as it gets colder, it gets harder to pull them apart. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's there's no way to really get that on video, but it's super dense. It's like a, a, a shoe sole is what it feels like to me. Shoe sole? That sounds like a German food. There you go. <laughs> the newer your bike is, the easier this will become. This one's a year old. It's a As this foam ages, it gets more stuck together and the, the foam in between kind of degrades. So it peels apart in between instead of just cleanly peeling off. Luckily on my bike, it was... Well, you can see that. It just has the whole... Not even a month old, probably. None of the foam came off with the back of the Scout emblem. Yeah. It's just like tamp stamped tin, but they are metal. So if you... If this is something you want to do, you're better off doing it sooner rather than later. And 
and it leaves a considerable amount on the tank, which is going to be challenging. And this is where you're going to get blood blisters. So what I'm going to do with this is really just start rolling it with my thumb. Yeah, I've never found a better tool than your thumb to peel this kind of crap off. So if if you're a guitar player, this will be really great because you know you're going to you use the same spot. You'll you have got your, your calluses. Callus. Um, I am not a guitar player. I don't do any physical labor, so I have no calluses. So the skin on my thumb is going to fall off by the end of today. Can maybe use your heel. There you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's what you're going to do is is continue to just work it and roll it. That eye and came off pretty clean, actually. It is. It is. There's some goo there, but we have goo gone that we'll use. Yeah, you want to get bit, rid of the foam as much of the foam as you can before you start using an adhesive remover. I may take advantage of Mr. Jim Bobbington here and use some of his thumb and let him blister while he's doing this since he's <laughs> filming. Yeah, we only need to film one side. I can. It's actually going pretty quick now that it's yeah, a little warmer. I'm this actually morning, surprised it was awful. how well that is. Uh, this morning, how easily was, that's coming off. I was out here re when it was really, really cold, and uh, it was so painful to do this. I was like. I'm done. Bring over adhesive remover, please. <laughs> so there's little tiny, it's hard to see because there's so many smudges and my fingers are gooey, but there's little tiny like abrasion surface scratches like swirl marks. I'm going to be covering most of those, but I'm afraid of some of the outer edge ones showing. So when we get down to all the adhesive being off, I'm going to hit it with a finishing polish and a polishing pad on my random orbit polisher just to make it shiny. Not something you could do on a matte finish, unfortunately. Nope. Um, yeah, so that's definitely a challenge. Matte finishes in general are a challenge. Yeah. There's like special soaps I think you can use to clean them. It literally came with a card that said this paint finish will change over time and you've got to deal with it basically oh direct from indian yeah i originally wanted the but black, I the it. matte black um but i also really like this blue because i'm a huge fan of blue it's a great blue this was is this an icon series this is not this no? is the deep water metallic 2020 I feel like there's a color just like this now that's considered an icon series. Yeah, the icon's a little bit lighter. It's um, this has a little more purple in it, and it's got some darker fleck. There's the the icon series is um, kind of in between this blue and this blue. It's just a little bit brighter. It doesn't have as much purple. It's almost like a like a, a royal blue in a way. This is in some light, it looks purpley. Yeah, I've seen pictures of your bike and thought it was black before. Yeah, especially since most of the time it sits in the garage because I don't ride it like most people. <laughs> I mainly bought it to look cool. Um, and I like looking at it. If I could put it in my living room, I would because I think it's a piece of art. It's a gorgeous bike. John likes collecting toys. I, I like to collect toys. This doesn't even have the Tacoma has probably gotten the most use out of his... I drive that thing. I Toys. love that. And you know, that's the newest one. <laughs> yeah, it's... Well, actually, no. It's still only, like, 2,000 miles on it. Because, you know, I work from home, so... I don't yeah, but you've only had it, what, two months? Uh, November, so what is it now, Mark? You've had so, this motorcycle a year, and you haven't even hit 500 miles? I haven't even hit 200 miles. Oh, my goodness. I know. I need to get out and ride more, but... I'm you need to get that slower. old, thin oil out of here. Yeah. Well, we're getting there. Oh, and there's this... So this is interesting. There's a scratch. So with those letters being thicker and having the squish on it, when you clean the bike, and you can see the N is actually imprinted into the black. It's got a little, hear that? Yep. So they wiggle when they get hot in the sun, and if you wipe your bike down afterwards, those letters will pivot and rotate, and then if it gets cold, they'll, they'll harden in that that area because they're kind of wiggly when you wipe it down. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but there are some scratches. Yeah, that, that adhesive is thick enough to be used as a fulcrum in it. Yeah, it, it pivots around and you can so get be some careful, dings that obviously, you don't even and that's realize. not something you can see, but that's all the way. I yeah, can that was see like the whole perfectly letter. against the edge of the letter. I can see, and then on the A, I can see all the scratches from the outer edge of the 
from wiping it down. So for those of you getting the new bikes and you're planning on doing this eventually, be cautious with that. Like I said, sooner is better than later on this type of So approach. now I'm gonna go get, I got this towel, I'm gonna get the goo gun. That's actually, that came off better and quicker than I expected yeah, it to. Yeah, I think it was just as so bad cold as it this looked. morning. Yeah, this, this morning it was so cold. I was so nervous about that. We'll play a lot of this in like so two So good, good trick. Poke a hole in the top, but don't peel it back. Because then you can control it. This is what... Yeah, it comes out super So then you quick. can actually... And this stuff is a citrus-based product, so it doesn't harm any uh, factory finishes or anything like that. And you can kind of rub it in and let it soak in in some of the places. But this is just elbow grease, but that actually wasn't that bad. I don't feel like I have a blister on my thumb. That's the dental floss that I decided not to use. <laughs> it didn't really look like you got a better tear removal on this side, really, compared to the other side, I think. Yeah. Either way works more, but you'll probably have less to peel off with your thumb if you do not use the Yeah, you can really see method. all of, you can see all of the ghost letters on it. Of where it had hit. Yeah, and the, those this letters are like raised. All clean. Yeah, it's I like it. <laughs> the letter, letters are raised well enough you could slip some painters tape underneath all the edges to to help in the removal process to make sure you're not gouging into the paint. I, st I slipped a credit card under one side and pried from the other side. But you're gonna you're most likely going to have to use the floss method if you want to keep those letters for some other designer purpose down the road. Like take your BMW Mine were all... tuned Toyota and make it a dine-in? <laughs> Mine were all folded and mangled. I just threw them in the trash. So what I'm going to do now is most of that is gone there's some that's still there but I'm gonna get the cutting pad and polish that and what that also does is because I had done it's called the last coat you know those different um, kind of poly silicon dioxide finishes you know the spray waxes that's on there and I want it to adhere so by using my cutting pad and buffer that's gonna help kind of pull it down so I'm gonna get that set up so this is um, just there's all kinds of different polishers you can get that are random orbits. This is literally a Porter Cable random orbit sander that has a Velcro attachment to it, and you can put any of your polishing pads on it. Most people have this. You can buy them from like Rio's Garage or Adam Polishes and stuff like that. I've had this Porter Cable since like 2001, and I've been polishing and detailing cars forever. I drop it everywhere, <laughs> and uh, it never stops working. So I just put some finishing polish on there, and I'm going to kind of get it on here first and I'm going to go a little bit slower because I want it to kind of work in so you can set your speed because if you turn it on real fast it splatters and again don't do this on a matte finish yeah don't do this on that There's still some stuff there, but you can actually see when my mirrors were originally put on, um, they smacked the tank. Oh, great. From the factory? From the factory. Well, from the dealer. I don't know if the mirrors are set um, or they were like got bumped in the showroom because they, even when they're tight, you can move them. Yep. I think I'm going to move them up because the um, head Those are going to be a little bit thicker. Thicker, yeah. So that polished it up nice, but there's still some ghosts of the letters. I don't know if you can see those. Oh yeah. Which is annoying, but with the headdress on it, I think it's gonna cover most of that. Yeah, those are a little bit deeper than just the clear coat. Yeah, they're that pretty one deep. In particular. Yeah, and well, but it's on both sides, and it's the upper corners, and I mean, you can from from this angle, I can see every yeah, single that's, letter. Yeah, that's not from removing them. That was just done over time by yeah, like things being it, leaned being upon or. So let's look at some piece of leather. But that's a that's a mirror ding right there. Ouch. Yeah, but I think the headdress is gonna cover yeah, it. Yeah, that'll cover it. So nicely. now I've got like some finger scratches on there that I'm just gonna. Buff out real quick. And that should do it. And then we work on placement. Yeah, that's nice. There's those base scratches, but 
I think ultimately once the headpiece is on there, you're not going to see it. This is one of the few color schemes where I, I actually like the way it looks without any badge. All right, so we're just eyeballing it after getting the uh, two pieces of tape level on one side. Making sure it looks good, fits properly before we go trying to match the other side up. We're going to measure like from the blue-black transition down to this corner, get the front edge taped, and then try and figure out a measure point somewhere to keep it level. But we're, we're eyeballing it off of this. Even though this has got an arc, we're just kind of looking at the distance up to the top edge to keep it as level as possible, to be true to form with um, Indians' um, design language. And it also helps to have a partner to hold the bike up straight. It does. It's so definitely that, more. I did this by myself, and it took many, many times for me to be satisfied with both sides being even. And I don't know if I nailed it or not. But we're going to get the other side taped up and start applying these things. All right, so a little about these things. Angie Reiners on Artibus makes these. She actually sculpts them out of clay and has them molded. Uh, so the two sides are not mirror images of one another, which I think is actually cool. You can tell they have slightly different noses um, and uh, facial expressions. So I think that's really cool about these is they are not... The beads are also different. Yeah, the beads are in a, a slightly different, different layout. Different location. The yeah. feathers are different. Everything is completely unique. Even the feathers are different side to side. So she really, she really puts her heart into, into making these things. And um, they are a resin aluminum combination. Uh, so they're a little bit malleable. If you heat them up, you can curve them a little bit if they don't fit exactly to the lines of the and tank the where you want to place them. And she delivers them. There is a crap your, ton of it, adhesive on the back of these things. That's the Scotch, like Scotch 3M. They will not be this going anywhere. This is what would have been great if it was on the emblems because it's thinner and it's easier to remove the stuff that's on the emblems. Yeah, if they it. just had a middle edge to put them on. But you can see there's a curve. I don't know if you can see the curvature. Yep. So they're kind of pre-molded to the shape of the tank, but by warming them up a little bit, they have a little bit of flex. So I, you can see. Oh yeah. They've got some, some movement in them. That scares me. That scares you. <laughs> I'm gonna go try it. I'm gonna pull out yep. some red stuff. Let's and go see stick them on. And again, the link, I'll throw the link to uh, Angie's website down in the description. So you can check out all she's got. She doesn't just have war bonnets. She has other pieces. Uh, she makes these things more specifically for scouts, uh, but obviously There's they'll fit the bobber. There's a bunch of stuff on there. And, and well. larger bikes, yeah. Um, I'm sure she'll work with you for a custom item. I'm going to get on, I'm going to get down so I can eyeball it a little better. So I'm going to line the nose front with this edge and I'm going to try and keep the feathers as parallel to this line as possible. Okay, hold up. Here's where we messed up. You need to apply heat to these things before pressing them onto the tank. This will allow them to be shaped to the tank. And once they're hot, you can stick them to the tank, place a crap ton of tape over it, and they will shape themselves to the tank. We missed that step the first go around, and you'll see why that became a problem later. But John was able to remove the emblems and uh, reapply new adhesive and get it all done properly. But let's continue. Sorry, my fat ass and head and everything is in the way. So the chin and the nose are the furthest out. Oh, that fits really nice. It didn't even have to bend that much. You can hear it pop and so I'm going to just hold it. Yeah, and probably applying heat to it while pressing will, or well, just sit it in the sun for 15 maybe, minutes and then yeah, press it on some more. I'll get it out in the sun and maybe do that. I don't know if I want to do the heat gun because I'm afraid of my paints sure. bubbling. Um, I use actually RC model car body paint and then um, I did clear coat over it. But I did a semi-gloss metallic. See, it's not popping anymore. Nice. I think it's on there, so let's... The color looks really good to me. Don't forget that. 
is attached to the other side. Yep, I'm just doing that. <laughs> I don't want to move that, but um, when you look at that, I'll clean up all the little fingerprints and tape sticky stuff. I just bumped into my bike, got really scared. That actually looks pretty good. So when we compare that to what was on, let me go get the... And it, uh, it covered up all the little scratches and dings. So positioning is really similar. Um, the Artemis one's just a little bit tinier than what's on the factory. I don't know if you can see that with glare. Yep, right in my shot. But it's pretty close. Looks good, let's do the other side. Right on. Then get her out in the sun. All right, so we've got it placed, but we noticed there's a bit of a gap on the top. So the top to bottom curvature isn't matching particularly perfectly. Um, the lengthwise curvature of the tank matches great, but we've got a bit of a gap here at the top that you can see. So we're gonna try to heat it up a little bit, see if we can mold it to the shape of the tank. I didn't look up the instructions and I didn't follow them, so. Sometimes you just get excited. Seriously, I've been waiting to do this for a while. I'm being really careful to watch the paint to make sure that nothing's bubbling or boiling. Because um, this thing gets seriously smoking hot. I don't know if you can see in there, it's glowing red. Oh yeah. So you don't want to bubble any of your paint. Even your tank paint, you don't want it to get too hot. So direct heat for a long time will cause things to peel. Yep, there it goes. Oh yeah. Problem is you probably have to hold it on there for yeah, a bit. Yeah, it's hot. I can smell it. Yep. But it's working. Yeah, it is. It's just really hot. <clears throat> yeah, and I feel like you're gonna have to hold it there until it cools. Yeah. For that adhesive to stick. I have, which will be okay. I have an extra towel. It's just I can feel it through my gloves. So I'm gonna reach over here, sorry, because I want to put some force on. That's working. There it is. Just gotta hold it, like you said, till it cools enough. But it worked. Yeah. I wasn't worried. Yeah, that's, it almost makes me want to that get closes water the now. gap. A lot more, a little bit. Yep. It's hot, isn't it? You might have to just do a little section at a time. Yeah, I think I might do like as opposed to trying like to the get front, the whole, the whole thing because it's so hot. Yeah, because you could close this gap up here a bit. Yeah. Definitely worked though. I just got to hold it on there so it stays stuck. And well worth it for a custom one off item that you can be rest assured nobody has the exact same thing so i probably didn't need to heat it up as much as i did i probably went too long on the heat because it is so soft now but as it's cooling it's sticking it just is going to take a while all right so the second one's been applied decided to stick this one on the top first so that it'll be easier to curve the bottom in and less noticeable if you don't get it all the way up against have it. Thinner material. It's easier to, I think, heat up and bend the feather. Yeah, the top is the thickest this part. This is just so thick right here. So I think uh, overall, you're better off if you apply from the top down, and you'll have uh, less of a battle getting it all curved properly. Uh, but overall, looks pretty darn cool. You might have to actually ride this thing to show it off. I know, right? Right on. I dig it. Happy customer here, Artibus Designs. That looks pretty good from here. The color change is pretty neat when you get the different angles in the sun. We'll be doing a couple more things to this bike in the future. A couple more DIY videos from Jim Bobbington. But until then, remember, don't be a skid mark.